Hello everyone and welcome to a test store that I was playing around with to show some visual filters. So I've actually um, just implemented a new uh, development store with uh, the newest Dawn team on it, so version 15. Um, and I'm just going to play around a bit with visual filters. So as we all know, obviously um, collection pages are very, very important. So if I just go to the collection page here, um, I see that I have the filter block right here um, and you can filter on availability. This filter is open um, standardly. Then obviously you can have the filter block uh, based on the price. Um, and then I wanted to show how to set this up um, because it has been rather difficult over the years to make such a beautiful filter where you have a color swatch and a color name. And this is actually um, becoming really, really easy now. So if you just want to um, compare this to how this would have looked um, before, obviously there were workarounds to do it, but it was way harder. Um, and now I want to show how easy it is to set it up. Because if you compare it to this, uh, which is also a color filter, uh, don't mind the names and stuff. This is just a dev setup. Um, I just went quickly uh, and fast. Um, but if you compare this filter to this filter, obviously this one is way better. Then another one that I've implemented is um, a snowboarding mount. So imagine that there are two types. Again, this is just um, irrelevant what the name is exactly. Um, but so you have two different types of binding mounts, for example, a fixed and an optimistic one. Um, yeah, it, if you're a snowboarder, you could maybe understand if, if these values would be correct, uh, what these would mean. But again, if you contrast this um, with a filter, and again, the image is also not perfect, um, but it depicts a um, snowboard mount that is fixed and one that is variable, it is way easier or way uh, cooler to um, yeah, work on a page or to browse on a page or on a filter block um, that is looking like this compared uh, to this, I would say. Um, so let's maybe just dive into how exactly uh, it was done. So basically, if you go to the back end of the store, um, I'm just going to replace myself here for a second. Um, you go to content, you go to meta objects, then we actually see that we have two types of meta objects. Um, first one is the mount. So this is the one that you see coming back uh, here. And then the second one is the color. Um, and so what you have to do to start is you have to create a meta field. So obviously you can just add a definition and in the definition, it should have uh, two fields. One is a single text field, which is going to be the name of the color. Um, and then the second one, so let's just set it up for a second. Um, color two. Um, voila, that's actually it. And then a second field is a color field for um, the color one, um, because that's already a type in the meta object. Um, if you wanna go for images, uh, on the other hand, you select files, but you have to make sure that it's only an image um, type. So you make this meta object with a name and a um, color swatch or and an image. Um, and then um, you actually create a meta I'm just gonna discard this for now because we've created it already, right? Um, you create a meta field. Um, in this case, I went for a product meta field. Uh, you can also do it on a variant level, obviously, if you like people uh, to filter on variant uh, levels. But here in this store, it was all product based and not variant based. And then you actually add a definition of a meta field and in the type, you actually select a meta object. Um, and you select the meta object um, that you just created in the step before. So if we go to mount type, for example, you will see that we um, referenced the mount meta object. Um, same for the color for filter. Here we uh, also go for the meta object, the color reference one. So then how this looks in the back end, if you have created those meta fields on a product uh, level, obviously, so the meta fields of the meta objects um, and you have um, added them to product. Um, then you can see them obviously here in the meta field section that we are all used to. Um, and just to make the comparison again, I just had a normal single field meta field and a single meta field field for the color and for the, for the bindings. 
which is the more boring approach, right? Those are the ones that you see here and here. Um, and if you compare them this with um, the meta fields that is connected to a meta object, um, which are these two, then you get um, this more beautiful uh, approach, which is way more cool to um, browse around and filter with, I would say. Um, so again, here you actually see, um, yeah, I'm sorry, here. if you then add, for example, uh, a new entry, then you see that the meta object pops up because we can add a name and a color to that meta field, which is like uh, powered by a meta object that has two fields. Um, so this is why you see two fields here. And then those two fields will actually be brought together in that meta field, so to say. And that meta field will then be the thing that you can filter on, right? Because this is actually a color swatch, which is this part, one part of the meta object. Um, and then this is the name, which is another part of the meta object. And together, um, they actually form one um, thing, which is the meta field that you can now filter on. So I think that this is just yeah a really big difference. I mean, compare um, coming on a page uh, like this or arriving on a page like this versus arriving on a page uh, like uh, this. This is actually a huge uh, difference, I would say. Um, and I think it would drive conversions um, to have this type of setup um, for sure compared to uh, this kind of setup. So this was just an easy video to just show what is possible with meta objects, meta fields, and obviously, uh, maybe I, I forgot this, uh, the search and discovery. So what you can then do um, to add those filters, obviously, is you go to search and discovery, you add a filter, and then you actually um, base it on uh, a meta field, a product meta field or a variant meta field, right? Uh, I've now selected all of them because you can select from the meta object or the meta fields that you created. Um, so here they're all selected, so I cannot select them again. Um, but yeah, I can go on and for example, say that I don't wanna uh, share this. Or by the way, you can also say, um, if you would say that for example, um, gray boards work very well, you can actually go to um, the search and discovery app and you can say instead of um, uh, ordering it in a um, yeah, automatic way, first of all, there is um, AI, you can select um, a reordering. Um, so there you could, for example, say if your product that is the most relevant is a baby blue product, um, then you could um, order it like this, or you can manually order it like this if, for example, this is not true and your green uh, option is actually the one that, um, um, that is bought the most. So it's a super exciting way to play around with to see if there uh, are any impacts on the conversion. Uh, in terms of what you want to bring forward, um, because obviously the human mind works in this way, that the first couple of uh, options are uh, the ones that you really want to click on or view. Um, so let's save this for a second, and then if we refresh, it should um, have indeed the green color um, to the front uh, or to the to the up to the upper part of the filter. And so yeah, you can play around with this. And again, uh, also by the way, um, how you how these are ordered, you can also um, select. So hope you liked it um, and yeah, see you again soon. Ciao.